the International Soccer Preview. We are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to our continuation of Series 19. This one looking at the players of the 2023 Asian Cup due to be played in January 2024. This episode is looking at the players of Vietnam. Here we go! Hello and welcome to the International Soccer Preview by Soccer Files Canada. I'm Kevin and this is Series 19 on the players of the 2023 Asian Cup, played in 2024. This episode covers Vietnam's players. And we're doing this media cast in two parts. Part one is a look at the candidates for the squad and their likelihood of making it. Uh, we think we went into too much detail in previous player media casts we've done. So we're aiming for a lighter, more uh, listener-friendly kind of narrative version this time. Uh, part two will come out when the squad lists are released and the final squad selected. We think that'll be in late December or early January. And at that time, we'll go back over the list that we create here and see who made it and who didn't. And we'll also cover, uh, cover a couple of other things, uh, which I'll talk about actually at the end of the podcast here. Um, we have made a separate video on what we'll be covering over the next nine months. YouTube watchers can see the link to that on the screen, and it can also be found in the show notes for both watchers and listeners. In short, we're focused on the Asian and African Cups, both of those taking place in early 2024. And we have also started uh, coverage of World Cup 2026 qualifying. So this episode comes in three sections. Uh, section one, where we give, uh, give a, and discuss some general information on the team. Uh, section two is the main part. We look at the main candidates in each position and uh, rank them according to their likelihood of making the uh, final squad. And uh, section three is a, just a short one where we give any closing thoughts and uh, preview part two uh, in more detail. Let's begin then. And we begin with uh, just a few comments on the squad uh, here. So we have three of them. The first one is uh, regulars not being called up. We've seen this actually in a couple of other teams um, that uh, uh, we have players who were kind of steadily called up for the team, uh, then uh, suddenly weren't called up for the last four to six games. Uh, and uh, incoming new players to replace them. So uh, our struggle is we don't know if these regulars are off the team and are kind of unlikely candidates for selection or whether they're being put aside temporarily just to try out some of this new talent. So I suppose uh, November will maybe give us uh, some insight into that, but uh, we weren't really sure how to categorize them uh, here uh, because it's kind of... Um, uh, kind of unimaginable that the players who've been regulars for uh, two years or more are just suddenly discarded like that. Um, one of the reasons could be uh, a manager change, which we'll get into more when we uh, introduce the managers. But uh, on March 1st, a new manager came in to replace a long-standing outgoing manager. So this may explain some of the changes. And if that is the case, it kind of leans towards... Uh, uh, the new arrivals actually being uh, permanent changes uh, rather than just uh, being tried out. Um, finally, uh, we talked about it in the team podcast that uh, Vietnam, well, especially in 2019, had a really young squad. It was kind of exciting. Um, uh, a new and exciting, very pacey uh, squad. Now, these same players will be four years older now and moving into their prime. Uh, I'm a little uh, sad myself that we haven't uh, seen the improvement that, that, that we hope for from Vietnam in terms of their results. But uh, I kind of am secretly hoping to see uh, this kind of come to fruition uh, in this campaign. Okay, let's look at a couple of retirements. And actually, we don't have uh, many for... Um, Vietnam. They kind of uh, 
really revamped the squad in 2019 with a with a young generation of players, and uh, the only really significant one here uh, is uh, Nguyen Nguyen Trong Huang, uh, Nguyen Trong Huang, uh, who uh, was with the team from 20, uh, 2009 to 21, 73 caps and 12 goals. Uh, he was a right defender and was a starter in the 2019 uh, Asian Cup. Uh, he did continue on with the team after that and last appeared in September uh, 2021, but that's uh, more than two years ago now. And so uh, he seems to be um, retired from the squad. At uh, He's 34 years old now. Uh, that's all we have for that. So let's take a look at their clubs. And uh, almost all of the players play uh in in um vietnam some of them have uh, had short kind of runs outside we'll mention that as we go along uh but really it's the the main clubs here uh and so uh, i would say uh, in no particular order we have uh Vietel fc or vietel and uh before 2010 they were known as Te kong uh, but have changed their name. Um, the next is uh, Hanoi FC. Um, we also have uh, Kong and Hanoi, uh, which is sometimes called uh, Police um, Hanoi Police. And uh, finally, we'll mention uh, BKMX Binduang um, as one of the uh, squads that uh, uh, quite a few of their players are coming from. So uh, when we talk about outside of country, um, again, just uh, really two players uh, on the roster here uh, with, uh, with clubs outside the country and all of the others playing within Vietnam. And we might as well look at those two clubs because there are only two of them. They actually are uh, uh, reasonably big names. So we, we uh, look at the big names that uh, um, players play for. So we have uh, one player, actually probably uh, the best forward there, playing for Yokohama uh, FC. Um, that's, uh, well, we won't get into the players. I'll mention it when that player comes up. And then we have another with a club in the Czech Republic, uh, Sigma Olomouc. Uh, but that player doesn't actually have any caps of the teams. He's just a yeah, an 18 year old player but um uh, looks like a good prospect in the future there okay we move on to their recent games and um part of the reason we're doing this is because when we look at the players uh, uh likelihood of making the squad we look at the last uh two years of games they've played and how much they've played uh for the team so uh we're going to go over their recent games over the last two years here so uh in uh january to march of 2022 um uh vietnam was finishing off their world cup qualifiers so uh the last four games of world cup 2022 uh, qualification there and they had a pretty tough run there uh, they played Australia China Oman and Japan we're not particularly concerned with the scores here uh, a bit later we'll, we'll we'll be a bit more concerned with the formations that they used for these games uh, after that uh, it was friendlies for a while so they had one friendly in June of 2022 against Afghanistan uh, two in September of 2022, Singapore and India. Uh, November 2022 was an interesting game. They played the club team uh, Borussia Dortmund and won, actually. Uh, they did try out a lot of new players for that particular game. And in December of 2022, a friendly against the Philippines uh there so uh, that is the 2022 friendlies and uh, at the end of december in 2022 and beginning of november uh was the uh, aff cup or the uh, well the first letter the first a there stands for uh asean so that's the association of southeast asian uh asian nations so it's um uh, uh everywhere from um indonesia to uh to uh, Thailand and Philippines and uh, Singapore and stuff like that. Uh, so they uh, had um, 
three games in December of 2022. That was basically the group stage uh, of that tournament where they played Laos, Malaysia, and Singapore. And uh, they made it past the group stage. Oh, actually, the group stage was uh, four teams, uh, as it turns out. Uh, so Malaysia was the last one, but that was played in January. So uh, it was five games in January. So the group stage uh, finished with Malaysia. Uh, sorry, I think I said Malaysia. It was Myanmar uh, there. And then uh, in the final rounds, uh, uh, the quarterfinals onwards are actually home and away games uh, in this tournament. So they played Indonesia twice and Thailand twice. So uh, five games in January of 2022. Uh, sorry, that should be 2023. And then eight games in that AFF Cup uh, in all. And they did bring most of their players, but there are a few players who uh, didn't participate in that at all. I'm not sure how it works because it's not a tournament uh, within a country, but it does seem to me that uh, uh, kind of once you name your, your squad, you have to stick with that squad uh, rather than bringing players in and out. So it tends to be you uh, players were either kind of uh, called up for all of them or for none of them. Uh, after that, in 2023, it's just friendlies, and they had a couple of friendlies in June. Uh, this becomes significant because they replaced their manager in March of that year. So this is under the new manager. Uh, the two games in June were Hong Kong and Syria. And then they had one game in September of 2023 against Palestine. Uh, but then three games in October. It was China, Uzbekistan, and South Korea. So we're doing this podcast, or most of it, at the end of October. So uh, we'll look at the uh, upcoming games in November right away here. But before we do upcoming games, we're going to look at their uh, formation. So we could go into great detail here because they have uh, varied their formation quite a bit. Uh, experimenting a lot over the last uh, two years. And there's not really a pattern to this, so I kind of have to list them one by one. Uh, but the one pattern we do see is that uh, uh, they use five uh, at the back, five at the back, so three central defenders and two, uh, a right back and a, a left back, uh, when they play strong teams. Uh, but again, that's not a hard and fast rule because we've seen them uh, use that same formation even against weak teams. Uh, a bit more prevalent of a pattern, though, is that three-man central defense. So sometimes it'll be part of a five-man central defense, but sometimes the uh, right and left back will move up and play as wingers. Um, so uh, generally, it's uh, actually... Um, the traditional four-man defense with two central defenders and a right back and a left back uh, is not that common for uh, uh, um, Vietnam. So they've only used a four-man defense twice over the last 20 games, but they've used the five-man and the three-man uh, uh, more often. Uh, another feature that's quite prevalent for South Korea uh, for Vietnam is a three-man midfield. So uh, I'll actually just just uh, put in the graphics here, their usual formations. It's a 5-3-2 or a 3-5-2. Uh, one of those two formations is uh, kind of the most common. And uh, so you can even see in that that it's basically a three-man midfield. Uh, whether it's just the three men uh, in the midfield or whether they're accompanied by two wingers basically moving up from the back, uh, that seems to be popular. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, that actually means that they're going to have right and left midfielders. And, and we've seen over the course of doing these uh, uh, media casts that uh, teams seem to be moving away from a, from a three-man midfield into something like a 4-2-3-1 formation where there are just two central midfielders. Um, uh, and consequently, those teams don't really have players uh, playing as left midfielder and right midfielder, which we consider a bit more of a defensive position than, say, a winger or uh, a left attacking midfielder. So um, um, we'll uh, meet some of those left and right midfielders. Anyway, uh, in terms of recent formation, they have tried uh, um, a 3-4-3 three, 
uh, in more recent games, I would say from those uh, June games onwards, uh, which is six games, we see the 3-4-3 three, three, uh, a little bit more. So uh, that's just, uh, and, and overall we see a single line of midfield. So no 4-2-3-1, um, for example, or 4-2-2-2, uh, two, 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 uh, just usually one line uh, of defence. But uh, sometimes they split that into two lines. So it could become... Um, this fourth uh, three four three could become a three two two three uh, with two defensive midfielders and two uh, more attacking midfielders, and uh, we've even seen this split further into a three two 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 one. So that would be uh, three lines of midfield in a sense, uh, with one forward, but the the two. Um, uh, attacking midfielders playing fairly far forward. But ultimately, these are variations of the 3-4-3 uh, three, three formation that they've been using uh, more recently. So perhaps a, a change under the uh, new manager there. Okay, so when we're going through, um, uh, maybe think in terms of uh, uh, three at the back for sure, um, possibly two or three central midfielders. And then, uh, to be honest, it... it Sometimes is a line of three forwards, but it's more often kind of uh, two attacking midfielders and one centre forward. All right, we finish with uh, uh, upcoming games, and we have the World Cup 2026 uh, qualifiers beginning for Vietnam at least in November. Uh, for others in the Asian region, uh, it began in October with the preliminary round. And we did a series of podcasts on that round. It was kind of interesting to do some of the uh, weaker and lesser paid attention to teams in the region. Um, but for stronger teams like Vietnam, uh, they received a buy in that round. And so round two begins here uh, in November. Uh, so two games uh the first one against the Philippines, and that's away. Uh, and then the next one uh, against Iraq, who they actually meet in the uh, Asian Cup as well. Uh, that one is at home. Uh, so we think uh, that they will be uh, bringing their best players to that one, especially against Iraq. Uh, they'll need to uh, field their strongest team possible. And then uh, we do expect them to schedule a couple of friendlies uh before the uh asian cup but no friendlies have been scheduled yet okay that ends section one our look uh, at the uh information about the team now we're gonna uh turn our attention to the players well actually we'll begin with managers so let's talk about that manager change that they underwent uh, the outgoing manager was a south korean manager pak hang sa is uh the uh outgoing manager and he was manager of vietnam uh, since uh, 2017 uh, until march of 2023 so he took a big role in the uh, underage teams uh, kind of bringing that uh, that team through uh, he took them to the 2019 copa america and the 2019 asian cup and uh, now he is uh, gone He's gone in favor of a uh, very experienced world manager, uh, Philippe Troussier, uh, a French manager. And so he took over in March of uh, 2023, and he has managed several teams. We'll just kind of focus on the uh, national teams here. Uh, he has managed Qatar, Japan, uh, South Africa, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, and Ivory Coast. Wow, what a lot of experience. And uh, uh, half of those teams he's taken through tournaments, most significantly the uh, Japan national team, uh, who he led through the... Uh, uh let me see 1998 to 2002 so he led them through two confederation cups there and uh the asian cup in 2000 and most significantly the world cup which they co-hosted in 2002. Uh, his only other tournament after that was as manager of qatar in the 20 2004 asian cup so this will be his first uh, uh tournament in in 20 years here uh, Philippe Troussier, the new manager of uh, Vietnam.
Okay, let's move on to goalkeepers, and we're going to begin by uh, just listing the candidates. So if their name is in black, uh, that means they have been through a tournament before, uh, like our definite candidate, Tang Van Lam. Uh, but uh, our likely candidate, his name is in grey, uh, and that means he hasn't been through a tournament. So it's uh, Nguyen Din Chui, uh, oh my God, I'm going to have trouble with these names. Uh, Gwyn Din Chiu, uh, uh, the uh, likely keeper. And then we have three possible candidates um, in uh, Tran Gwyn Man and uh, Gwyn Van Tuan and Gwyn Van Viet, uh, the three uh, possible candidates for goalkeeper. Uh, we are going to add to the list the possible but unlikely candidate, Pham Van Fong. Uh, and, and all we'll say about him is that he had just one appearance on the bench, but it was in September of 2023. So being as recent as it was, we kind of have to give him an outside chance of uh, making the squad. And actually the same is true of uh, Tran Min Tuan, um, a possible but unlikely keeper, but he did show up in September of 2023 on the bench. So, uh, but we consider them just uh, uh, possible but unlikely. Okay, and we do have a couple of players who are off the team, but we're not going to put them on the list or even mention them unless they show up on the roster, uh, on the final roster. So let's try to keep it uh, limited to the to the more likely candidates here. So we begin by a closer look at the uh, definite candidate, Tang Van Lam, and uh, he's been with Vietnam since 2017. Uh, and has 41 caps. He's, he's 30 years old, so one of the older players on the on the field. An interesting detail about Tang, uh, Tang Van Lam is that he was born in Moscow, uh, Russia. Uh, I think that um, uh, I, I'm seeing that he actually was with a couple of Russian youth squads. So it looks like he he lived there for a while. Spartak Moscow and Dynamo Moscow. Um, but he, he then moved to youth clubs in Vietnam and has played in uh, mostly in Vietnam. Uh, he did actually play for a, a team in Japan, uh, Cerezo Osaka, uh, but in 2022 came back to play for his Vietnamese team. So Tang Van Lam was the starting keeper in the 2019 uh, Asian Cup. And over the last two years, he started 15 of their 22 games there, subbed in for one and on the bench for one. Um, and not selected for three uh, three matches. So he is a definite candidate, and uh, we think probably the starter uh, for this tournament as well. Uh, the likely candidate is Gwyn Din Tru, uh, Gwyn Din Tru, uh, and um, he's been new to the team actually since 2023 with two caps. Uh, even though he is 33, uh, 33 years old, yeah. Uh, no, uh, he will be 33 years old when the tournament begins. Uh, Hai Phong in Vietnam is the club he plays for, but we won't uh, actually mention uh, clubs uh, that much, especially if they play within Vietnam. Uh, the important thing is he got his first appearance on the bench in June of 2023, and he started two of their remaining six games and was on the bench for three and not selected for one other. So uh, that's pretty good recent participation, and it has us thinking that uh, uh, he may have come in to take over as the second string keeper, but we'll talk more about that when we uh, 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 summarize the section with the narrative. Uh, let's look at the three possible candidates. The first one is Tran Gwyn Man, and he's been with the team since 2014 and has 33 caps. So he kind of was the second string keeper. Over the course of the last uh, two years, he started four of their 22 games, and he was on the bench for 11. However, he's one of the players we talked about at the beginning. He was not selected for seven matches, including the last six matches. So again, uh, kind of a, a regular with the team uh, who has uh, been left off and we're a bit mystified by that, whether it means he's kind of been dumped 
or whether he uh, uh, is just being set aside so they can maybe try try out a couple of other players. But we'll talk in the summary uh, uh, a little bit more about that. Next, we have uh, Gwyn Van Juan. He has one cap since his first appearance in 2021, and he returned uh, in June of 2022 after a shoulder injury. Didn't start any games uh, for the squad, but he was on the bench for 10. Uh, however, he too uh, has not been selected for the last six matches. So uh, again, not sure if that means he's off the team uh, or whether he'll make a return. Finally, we have uh, Gwyn Van Viet, and he got his first cap in October 2023. So uh, this is a good example of what we're talking about, young players coming in or new players coming in to replace uh, uh, regulars on the team. First cap in October 2023, he didn't start uh, either of their remaining games, but he was subbed in for one and on the bench for one. So uh, Gwyn Van Bet, kind of um, uh, 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 a new kind of candidate to consider. Okay, so let's finish with a summary and a little uh, narrative on what's going on in the goalkeeper position. So um, it was actually, uh, it was actually Tran... Uh, Tran Gwyn Man, uh, our possible candidate who was starting their World Cup qualifying games in early 2022. Uh, but Tan, uh, Tang Van Lam kind of seized the position after that and started almost all games since. Uh, only recently did Tang Van Lam relinquish the starting position with uh, our likely candidate Gwyn Din through starting two of the last four games. Um, so, uh, nevertheless, despite that, we do see uh, Tang Van Lam as the starting keeper, uh, but we're uh, wondering if uh, Gwyn Din Tru has taken over as the backup keeper, because uh, Tran and, uh, um, sorry, the uh, uh, Tran Gwyn Man and Gwyn Van Tuan have drifted off the team. We saw that they didn't start or weren't selected for the last six. Uh, so whether they are candidates or not, or whether someone like the newcomer Gwyn Van Viet uh, is going to be selected for the final squad kind of remains to be seen. In short, the question is, uh, is it new players or uh, uh, regular players uh, that are going to be selected? But anyway, Tang Van Lam um, looks like a, a, a likely starter. Okay, let's move on to defenders, and we have central defenders, and we begin with uh, a definite candidate, uh, Doi, uh, uh, Do Doi Man, as a definite candidate, uh, and also uh, Gwen Thang Bin, uh, Gwen Thang Bin, and then we have our likely candidate, Quang Gok Hai. Uh, and actually two likely candidates. The other is uh, Bui Hang Viet An. Uh, Bui Hang Viet An. And uh, then we have uh, three possible candidates uh, as central defenders. Bui Tian Dung, uh, Fan Tuan Tai, and uh, the third one, Tuan Duang Gia. Uh, we'll go over those ones, and um, uh, we will just throw out a name here as a possible but unlikely candidate, because there is a chance he'll be called back, and that is uh, uh, Gwen Than Chung. Uh, he's been with the team since 2018 and has 22 caps, so he's another regular uh, who's been pretty much uh, discarded uh, in recent times. Um, uh, he started seven of their 22 games over the last uh, two years, and he was subbed in for three and on the bench for three, and uh, nine matches that he wasn't selected for, including the last six. So again, uh, a kind of a regular player uh, who is uh, uh, suddenly off the team for the last six games. Um, so uh, we think there's a chance he'll come back, uh, but missing uh, all the games since uh, uh, June is... Um, not promising. Uh, okay, let's go back to the candidates and take a closer look at them. So Doi Duman, 
uh, our definite candidate. He's always called up. He's been with the team since 2015 with 55 caps and one goal. Uh, he was a starter in the uh, in the 2019 Asian Cup, and uh, he actually was out with a shoulder injury for a while, so he returned from that in June of 2022 and started 13 of their remaining uh, 18 games. Uh, and he was subbed in for two besides and on the bench for three others. So he is always uh, named to the squad, and we consider him a definite candidate. Uh, the next is uh, Gwyn Tan Bin. Um, uh, I think I'll just go straight to his recent participation here, unless it uh, makes a difference. Uh, Gwyn Than Bin uh, started eight of their 22 games over the past two years. He was subbed in for four, but on the bench for nine. Uh, matches and if that doesn't add up I may be leaving stuff out like in his case he was with the under 23 team for one or sometimes there's a suspension or an injury that'll make it not add up uh, anyway Gwyn uh, Than Bin uh, was uh, always selected then but was on the bench uh, for uh, more than half of the time so uh, we don't really see him as a starter but we do see him as a definite candidate to uh, make it to the cup in fact more of a starter is uh Quang Gok Hai and uh, he's been with the team he's a veteran with uh, Vietnam since 2014 so 76 caps and six goals for the 30 year old and uh, he was also on the uh, uh, Asian Cup 2019 squad uh, starting all games and actually as a captain there but I see that uh, he's not captain uh, right now nevertheless an important player uh, for them he started over the last two years 13 of their 22 games he was subbed in for one and on the bench for three but we uh, moved him down because he was not selected for five games which is the the reason but the uh, two of those games were the last two matches in October so uh, we would have him as a definite candidate uh, but uh, uh, we're a little bit thrown off by the fact that he wasn't selected for the last two matches and I'll just point out that he sometimes plays uh, also as a defensive midfielder okay uh, increasingly involved is uh, Bui Huang Viet An and uh, he has been with the team just since 2022, but he has 14 caps. Over the last two years, he started 10 of their games and was subbed in for four. Uh, besides that, was on the bench for six games. So actually, um, uh, just three games he wasn't selected for. There, One of them, he was with the under-23 team. So uh, he's a young fellow, uh, 24 years old now. And uh, Bui Huang Viet An, uh, as I say, increasingly involved and actually played as a right attacking midfielder once in 2022. So we see sometimes uh, uh, movement like that around the field, which really confuses us, but generally uh, a central defender. Uh, now we move on to our possible candidates, uh, Bui Tian Dong. And uh, he was a starter in the 2019 Asian Cup. He's one of the uh, more... Uh, senior players on the squad, been with uh, Vietnam since 2015 with uh, 47 caps. He's 28 years old. And uh, Bui Tian Dong uh, started eight of their 22 games over the last two years, subbed in for one and on the bench for five. Uh, and he had injury and coronavirus for a few. But the key point is uh, he was fairly regular until he was not selected for the last four matches. Those were the only matches he uh, missed due to non-selection. So again, another of the regular players who seems to be uh, off the team and we're not sure what his status is. Uh, he probably would have been uh, um, definite or likely had he not missed the last four games there and uh, next one is a uh, fun Chen Ta, uh, fan Tuan Tai uh, and he is uh, new since 2022 uh, with seven caps he's 22 years old and he got his first cap in September of 2022 and uh, but then was off the team for nine months uh, and returned in June 2023 uh, to start four of their six games 
uh, and he was subbed in for one and with the under-23 team for another. So basically, uh, one of the new players replacing uh, uh, people like uh, Buin, uh, people like uh, Bui Tian Dung, who have been left off the team in recent times. So um, uh, he played as a left midfielder. He's actually... Um, I think he was coded as a left midfielder, but he played left midfield only once and otherwise uh, has been a central defender. So uh, we moved him to the central defense uh, position and um, we're not sure actually what his uh, uh, coding will be, but maybe if he plays in this cup, we'll get a better sense of it. Uh, our third possible candidate is Tuan Duong uh, Giap. And uh, he's brand new to the team since 2023, just 21 years old. And uh, he subbed into two of the four games. Um, he didn't start any of the four games since his first one, but he was subbed in, sorry, for three and not selected for one other. So again, a new player coming in. We're not sure uh, what to make of it, whether he's a serious candidate or just being tried out. Uh, okay, and then we talked about Gwyn Than Chung, uh, also one of those kind of regulars who uh, um, haven't been called up recently, so we put him as possible but unlikely. Let's talk about the uh, position uh, then in summary. So as we pointed out in the section one, it's almost always a three-man uh, central defensive line. So Doi Du Man is a, a staple in that three-man defensive line. Uh, the other two positions, though, are a bit of a rotation. And uh, to kind of roughly summarize, we could say uh, uh, the incoming Bui Tian Dong is replacing the outgoing Bui Huang Viet An. And similarly, uh, Gwyn Than Chung, roughly speaking, uh, uh, is being replaced by the newer Gwyn Than Bin. So again, it kind of comes down to whether they're going to go back to the regular players who had the position, uh, which would be, um, uh, sorry, which would be uh, Bui Ten Dong and uh, Gwyn Than Chung, or whether it's going to be the new ones, um, uh, Fan Tuan Te and uh, Tuan Dong uh, Giap. Okay, and. Um, uh, and then to add a spanner in the works, the uh, the left midfielder, I think uh, I wrote left back on the graphics, but left midfielder uh, uh, Fan Tuan Te has been used in four of the last five games, uh, kind of joining the defense there. So uh, the only thing we can be clear on here really is uh, Do Di Ma, uh, doi, uh, Do Doi Man uh, as a starter in that back line. But again, November uh, will be enlightening as to as to who they're going to go with. Uh, let's move on to uh, left back. And I put all that information uh, in the wrong spot uh, that should have been under central defenders. But uh, uh, moving on to left back, we have a definite candidate in Doan Van uh, Hao and a possible candidate in Vo Min Trong. And a uh, possible but unlikely candidate, another one of those regulars who uh, hasn't appeared for the last six games, and that's Gwyn Fong Hong Doi. Uh, Gwyn Fong Hong Doi. Uh, but we uh, put him as possible but unlikely because he wasn't selected for the last six games. Uh, but we actually will cover him uh, 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 in the bio here because uh, he's uh, such a regular that we think he might come back. Anyway, Duan Van Hao uh, is the definite candidate. He's been with the team since 2017 with 26 caps. And uh, he was uh, actually a substitute in the Asian Cup in 2019. But after game one, he gained the starting position. And uh, he returned after a long-time knee injury in September of 2022 and started 10 of their remaining 16 games. Uh, and he was on the bench for one uh, after that, maybe still recovering. However, he got injured again 
uh, and he was injured for the last four games. So that would be September and October. Uh, and so uh, his status is a bit uh, uncertain. We don't have a return date on him, but the poor guy, after returning from a knee injury and then starting regularly, then got a heel injury uh, and has been out uh, uh, in September and October. So we'll have to update you when we get a bit closer to the cup. Uh, if he is indeed out, it'll open the door for the other two candidates. And in fact, it already has for possible candidate Bo Min Krong, who uh, got his first cap in October 2023, obviously brought in to uh, replace uh, uh, Duan Van Hao. And uh, uh, he started both of their games, in, uh, uh, sorry, both of their uh, remaining games, uh, the last two games in October 2023. So um, he's just 22 years old, Bo Min Thong, and uh, I suppose it depends on the injury status of Doan, uh, uh, his fate. He could be the starter. Uh, or uh, the possible candidate, Gwyn Thong Hong Doi, could come back uh, if Doan is injured. And uh, he was also a starter in the uh, Asian Cup. Uh, I don't think he played as a left back in all games. He started as a right back in uh, both of his starts in that tournament. But he is coded as a, uh, a left back. We have a bit of a process we go through uh, for coding players. But uh, uh, left back is what he's coded at. Uh, and uh, again, may return uh, to the squad. Gwyn Fong Hong Doi. So uh, we'll summarize the position with uh, a bit of a narrative. So sometimes, as we said in the intro, uh, in their five-man back line, uh, they will have a right back and a left back. Uh, but sometimes uh, it's a three-man back line with the right back and left back sometimes uh, pushing up to become wingers. Um, uh, Gwyn Fong Hong Doi and Duan Van Hao uh, shared the position, really, uh, but over the last two years, Duan uh, took it over increasingly. Uh, but with his uh, recent injury over the last four matches, uh, the left midfielder who will meet soon, uh, Trey Viet Hong, was used twice. And then in October, as we saw, the uh, left back, uh, Bo Min Tong, who we introduced here, has been called up uh, for the last two matches. So... Um, the position is uh, basically Duan Van Hao's uh, position, but if he's injured, it creates a bit of chaos, and there are a couple of candidates uh, who might vie for the position. Let's move on over to the right back, and we begin with a likely candidate here in Ho Tan Te, uh, and then a couple of uh, possible candidates with uh, uh, Vu Van Tan, and uh, Ho Bang Kwong, uh, who we'll look at soon. Um, we have a, a couple of possible but unlikely, so I always make a decision as to whether to put them on the list. The first is Pham Trong uh, Hugh, and he got his first cap with a start in September, but then was not called up for any of the October games. So I suppose I'll add him to the list because uh, he's uh, recent, but we consider him possible but unlikely. Uh, the other one we won't put on the list, Pham Juan Man. Uh, after January 2022, he had just one appearance as a substitute. Uh, uh, um, also, we had the retired player that we mentioned at the beginning, Gwen Throng Huang. Uh, Gwyn Trong Hang uh, last played for the team in 2021, so we won't put him on the list either. Uh, but let's look at the candidates we have then. Ho Tan Te uh, has been with uh, Vietnam since 2018 with 23 caps and four goals, pretty good for a right back. And uh, uh, he was on the squad in the 2019 Asian Cup, but just on the bench there. Um, in fact, he wasn't initially selected for the squad, but came in to replace uh, another player. Uh, over the past two years, he started 12 of their 22 games and uh, was uh, subbed in for three and on the bench for three uh, and not selected for four matches. So that's a pretty good record. However, uh, he uh, 
he missed the he was not selected for the last three matches so uh we still have him as likely he, here though and that's mostly due to a lack of uh, other candidates um so we we kept him at the likely level but a bit concerning that he's out for the last uh, three games uh the first of our two possible candidates is vu van pan and so uh He's been with the team since 2015 with 46 caps and five goals. Uh, however, he was not selected for the Asian Cup in 2019. Uh, however, he's come back into the team starting eight of their 22 games over the past two years, subbed in for five and on the bench for two. Uh, but he wasn't selected for seven matches, and that includes the last four matches. So once again, a player who uh, seemed to have been dumped uh, by the uh, new manager. Uh, and conversely, we have Ho Van Kwan, uh, who's been on the team since 2023, uh, uh, got his first cap in October here, just a couple of weeks ago, and didn't start either of those games, but was subbed in, uh, oh, there were three games in October, so subbed in for two and not selected for one other. So he's just 20 years old, Ho Van Kwan, and uh, uh, again, kind of incoming player versus the outgoing Vu Van Tan and which way the manager will go with these, uh, we're not sure. So uh, uh, basically I have summarized the position uh, right there, but we will go back and uh, 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 kind of cover it in the narrative. So Ho Te Tan and Vu Van Tan uh, shared the position exclusively actually until recently uh, Ho actually, Ho, Ho Tan Te actually played a little bit, little bit more. However, neither of them were called up for recent matches. So I'll repeat, this is all a bit mysterious. Uh, in my mind, I'm thinking surely they can't be dumping players like this, uh, uh, two veterans at this late stage. And then um, uh, replacing them for the last three games is... Uh, uh, well, one player, uh, Pham, who we didn't mention because he just came in for one game and left, and then newcomer uh, right midfielder Truong Tian An, who we'll meet soon, um, and then uh, Ho Van Kong, uh, only being used as a substitute. So basically, you know, it seems like they're kind of getting rid of two regular players and replacing them with no one. So that's why we think some of those regulars might be called back into the team for the Asian Cup. Okay, that is the end of defenders, and we move on to the midfield. And uh, oh, I thought we had a, uh, I thought we had one versatile midfielder, and we surely do. Um, but I guess I, I put them in a different category. So let's move on to defensive midfielders. And actually, for defensive players coded as defensive midfielders, we only have uh, three uh, candidates at the possible level uh, for this. We have more at the central midfielder level, and we'll see that they're the ones who also play defensive midfield. Anyway, the three possible candidates are Gwyn Tai Song, and uh, the next one is Gwyn Duk Chen, and the last one is Huang Van Tuan. Uh, oh, wait, we have four. The last one really is Pham Van Luan. So uh, that's all we have at this uh, level, four possible candidates. So let's take a look at them. Quinn Tai Son, uh, brand new to the team. He's appeared in four of their last five games. Uh, he's, he's 20 years old and uh, got his first cap in June of 2023 and started uh, started two of their remaining five games and also subbed in for two. And uh, the other one, he was with the under-23 team. So uh, uh, another one kind of of that category of uh, kind of newcomers. Uh, next, we have Gwyn Duk Chen. And... Uh, uh, he uh, was off the team for a while, but he returned after a 15-month absence in uh, just recently in September 2023 and didn't start any of their remaining four games, but he was subbed in for one and on the bench for three others. So we probably won't see uh, Quinn Duck Chen on the field, but uh, uh, he might be on the bench. Hang Van Tuan 
uh, also new to the team in June of 2023. Uh, didn't start any games, but was subbed in for three and on the bench for one and not selected for another. So Han Van Tuan also probably uh, just a bench player if he makes it. And finally, Pham Van Wan uh, got his first cap even more recently in September 2023. And... Uh, um, didn't start any, but was subbed in for two and on the bench for two uh, others. So all of these players kind of in the same category of uh, uh, new players coming in. Uh, and we won't summarize the position until we go through the central midfielders, because often they overlap. And uh, it's here, players coded as central midfielders, where we find our starters. So we begin with the definite candidate, Do Hong Dong. Uh, and uh, three definite candidates here, by the way. The next is Gwyn Kwan An, and I see that he's actually uh, the captain uh, right now. I don't know if the captaincy jumps around, but uh, uh, he's listed as the captain. And uh, we have Gwyn Hwang Duck, kind of an interesting player uh, who we'll talk about. Uh, we also have a couple of... Uh, Candidates who we won't add to the list here. Uh, Chao Ngok Kwang. Uh, he was already drifting off the team and then he wasn't uh, selected for the last six matches. So we'll just leave it as his name and bring him back uh, if he makes the squad. Uh, and the other one is Gwyn He Hoi, uh, who's rarely called up and then uh, uh, wasn't called up for the last three games. Uh, sorry, the last four games. Again, we won't put him on the list. And um, then we have a couple of other players uh, who uh, are seemingly off the squad, so I won't go uh, into detail on those. In fact, I won't even put them on the list. Let's look at the main candidates then. And uh, Do Hung Dung, uh, a real staple in the midfield there. Uh, been with the team since 2018 and has 37 caps and one goal. And uh, Do Hong Dong was a starter in the 2019 Asian Cup and uh, re a real starter for them because he started 18 of their 22 games over the last two years. And uh, he wasn't selected for four others. Uh, but those weren't uh, uh, necessarily the recent games. So uh, we consider him a definite candidate. Next, uh, Gwyn Kwan On uh, has been with the team since 2016 with 40 caps and one goal. However, he was not selected for the uh, uh, Asian Cup in 2019, not even the preliminary squad. And over the past two years, he started 11 of their 22 games, so half of the games. Uh, he was also subbed in for four and on the bench for three, and he too was not selected for four matches. So uh, just missing four out of 22, that's pretty good. That's why we have him as a definite candidate. And uh, finally, we have uh, Gwyn Huang Dok, also a definite candidate. Uh, he's been with the team since 2019 with 33 caps and two goals, uh, but he's just 25 years old, so already kind of a good career with the national team. Uh, he too did not make the Asian Cup in 2019, but he was selected for the 27-man preliminary squad. He just didn't make the final cut, uh, which was a surprise, uh, to me at least. Um, yeah, may, uh, uh, yeah, not a bad time to say that. I, I kind of have an overview of the squad, so maybe uh, people really in the know of the Vietnam team uh, might, might say, oh, of course, uh, I, I, I'm not surprised at all he didn't make it, but from my perspective, uh, it was a surprise. Anyway, over the past two years, Gwyn Huang Duck has started 12 of their 22 games and subbed in for four. He was also injured for two, and like the two other definite candidates, just four out of those 22 matches that he wasn't selected for. In his case, uh, Three of those were uh, right at the beginning of the period, so he only uh, missed one recent fixture, Gwyn Huang Duck, uh, but that was in October of 2022. Uh, nevertheless, it didn't shake our confidence that he'll be a starter. 
Uh, he's kind of the central central midfielder, if you will, uh, for a period, but he's quite versatile too. And we've seen him playing as an attacking midfielder. And get this, in recent games, he's been the centre forward. So uh, kind of an interesting uh, uh, player, Gwyn Hung Duck, a uh, central midfielder who doubles as a uh, starting centre forward in recent times. Uh, okay, now we can kind of summarise the position because... Um, uh that's all we have and uh as we said in the opening uh, uh in their formations it's about two players two central midfielders about half the time and then uh three in a line about half the time and uh, actually if there are three uh these guys will also play the right and uh, left midfield role uh, most of the time but we'll talk about that more when we get to uh, uh, left and right midfielders. So Do Hung Dung and Gwyn Tran An are the main partnership there uh, in the central defence. And uh, Gwyn Tai Son, the uh, defensive midfielder, uh, is the only one of those who has been uh, used uh, really, and he's been used more recently. And uh, we saw that Gwyn Hang Duck was used for uh, periods, but he also plays other positions like attacking midfielder or centre forward. So uh, I think that is why um, uh, Gwyn Tai Son is getting more of a look in uh, uh, when when Hang Duck plays uh, further forward. Okay, uh, we move on to left midfielders. And as I said, uh, a lot of teams don't have many players coded in this position, but uh, Vietnam does because they use the position more. So left midfielder, uh, it's just three possible candidates, though. The first one is Phu Viet Hung. Um, and the second is Phan Van Duc. And the third is uh, Kwat Van Khan. I, I should probably put Fan Van Duck uh, first there. I'm just going to move him up to the uh, top of that one. Uh, and the reason is because uh, Fan uh, Van Duck is more of a uh, veteran. Uh, he has 43 caps for the national team since 2018 and five goals and uh, he was part of the Asian Cup squad as a starter in 2019. Uh, hasn't started that much recently though, just seven of their 22 games, uh, but he was subbed in for six. Uh, he was uh, injured for five matches and then curiously uh, not eligible for the last match and I'm not sure what that means. Uh, so really, there were just two matches over the 22 that he wasn't uh, uh, selected for. So uh, that makes him a bit more likely. But there's uh, some doubts surrounding him uh, here. Um, he's also injured, but he's expected to be back before the cup. Uh, but uh, the eligibility issue uh, on the source I have, it says, uh, due to cross-competition. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, so it's hard to say uh, because of both the uh, injury possibly extending into the cup or because of this uh, ineligibility thing. Uh, we moved him down to possible uh, there. And I'll just finish by saying that uh, he's usually uh, playing as a left attacking midfielder. So not part of that kind of central midfield, but a bit further forward. Fan Van Duck. Uh, the next one is Phu Viet Hung. So he's new to the squad since September 2020, 2023, and he has started two of their remaining four games, and he was on the bench for one, but also not selected for one. Uh, so, um, yes, yeah, one of the newcomers, True uh, Tru Vet, Tru Vet, oh my goodness, Tru Viet Hung. Uh, okay, I survived. Uh, last one is Kwat Van Kang. And uh, he uh, got his first cap uh, in September. Sorry, I thought it was recently, but it was September 2022. And he didn't start any of their remaining 17 games, but he was subbed in for seven uh, and on the bench for one. Uh, and he missed all of the uh, AFF Cup games, so the ACN Cup. Uh, he wasn't selected for that, so missed quite a few games there. So uh, we'd still have him as possible. 
uh, he's got seven caps uh, since uh, 2022. That Oh, yes, they're all as a substitute. So if he does make the squad, it'll be as a sub. So as we can see, even though we have the left midfielder position, it's really not left midfielders playing it. Uh, it's the central defenders, oh, sorry, the central midfielders who are playing it. However, our first candidate, or our second candidate here, Kru Viet Hong, was there uh, in two recent games. And as I said, uh, Fan Van Duck, more of an attacking midfielder, uh, even though he's labeled as a left midfielder. Let's move over to the right, and here's the versatile midfielder that I probably should have introduced early on, one of my favorite players, Gwyn Quang Hai, uh, as a definite candidate. So uh, we just, uh, he's kind of coded as a right midfielder, but I myself have changed his coding to a versatile midfielder uh, for this podcast, uh, media cast in order to kind of represent his true role with the team. Uh, we also have a portable candidate in Trong, Ken, uh, Trong Chen An. Uh, I actually did uh, kind of uh, talk to a Vietnamese person about how to say these names. And uh, if I can say them slowly, uh, it's a little bit better. But when I'm kind of rolling along, it's kind of hard to uh, work in the uh, some of the sounds. And uh, I know they're not great, but uh, um, I'm trying to get a bit closer to uh, uh, a bit closer to uh, uh, the the truth of the sound, if you will. Okay, let's go back to our definite can uh, candidate, Gwyn Kang uh, Hai. And so he's been with the team since uh, 2017. And uh, he was a starter in the 2019 uh, Asian Cup. Uh, he got the goal of the tournament in that cup. That's one of the reasons uh, I like him. Uh, but he was really great in that tournament. Um, uh, I said in my notes, uh, his active and skillful play makes him a great hope for the future of Vietnamese football. So I really hope to see... Uh, uh, wonderful stuff from him in this tournament. Uh, over the past two years, he started two. Uh, sorry, started 15 of their 22 games, and he was subbed in for three and on the bench for one. So uh, he was injured for the last match, but it doesn't seem that serious, and uh, uh, he was not selected for just two of those 22 matches. So yeah, it's a bit of a worry uh, that he is injured, but uh, and he would be a huge loss to the team. But um, we'll have to kind of update that in part two and uh, let you know what's going on. So, um, uh, yes, he starts most of the games, but uh, it's anyone's guess where he's going to show up on the field. So we could loosely say that he's based around center midfield, but he shows up uh, on the left side and on the right side. I think he's uh, been a left back. Uh, or oh, sorry, a right back uh, once, a uh, right attacking midfielder, and I do believe he's played as a centre forward uh, too. So uh, all over the place, Gwyn Quang Hai, and uh, uh, a really interesting player. Okay, uh, Tron Chen An is our possible candidate. He got his first cap, uh, his first cap in June. 2023 and started three of their remaining six games and he was subbed in for the three others so actually uh, a promising candidate we just have him as possible uh, because he's so new to the team uh, but uh, uh, that looks good he was fielded in all six games since his first one in june of 2023 okay those are the only candidates we have for right midfielders so let's talk about the position uh, in a narrative summary uh, so the, again the position of right midfielder is used quite often but it's played mostly by central midfielders specifically by do dong uh, do hong dong and uh, uh, Gwyn Quang Hai actually does appear there in the position that he's coded at, uh, but we've seen he starts all over the field, so uh, hard to pin him down. But he does play as a right midfielder uh, uh, sometimes as well. Okay, moving on up the field, we look at left wingers, and we're kind of uh, viewing this as the upper left quadrant of the field. So uh, we'll talk about left wingers and left attacking midfielders and even left forwards. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, these positions take up 
uh, these uh, players coded as left wingers take up uh, all of those positions sometimes but we'll try to try to parse it out for you here we begin with a likely candidate in Gwyndin Park uh, Gwyndin Park uh, is a likely candidate uh, he's just 19 years old we'll come back to that and uh, Bui V. Howe uh, a possible candidate here that's all we have. So let's go back to uh, Gwyn Din Bak. And uh, as I said, 19 years old. And he got his first cap in October of 2023. But then he started all three of those games. So uh, uh, maybe we're being a little inconsistent here um, because we have coded players like that as possible. And we have him coded as likely. But uh, we'll stick with it, I would say, somewhere between possible and likely, uh, Gwyndin Bach. And finally, uh, the possible candidate, Bui V. Howe, uh, he got his first appearance in October, so just a couple of weeks ago, and didn't start any of those three games, uh, but was subbed in for one and on the bench for two. So we have Bui V. Howe as a possible candidate here. And again, uh, let's summarize the position. So left wing, uh, on the left side, actually, the winger position is often played by the uh, left back, uh, Doan, who we met. Uh, that's the guy who uh, uh, might be injured. Um, but uh, uh, the position of left wing can also be played by the left midfielder, Fan Van Duck, or the uh, secondary striker, Fan Quan Hai. And uh, uh, I'd say most often, uh, more than 50% of the time, uh, the position is more of a left attacking midfielder. Uh, when it is a left forward, it's often uh, Gwyn Tian Lin. Uh, and we'll meet all of these players shortly, so don't uh, get confused. Um, and quite interestingly, actually, uh, these players who we're going to meet also cover the right side too, the la the right wing, right attacking midfield or right forward position uh, too. There's kind of a, a cadre of three of them who uh, cover those positions a lot of the time. Uh, okay, let's move over to the right winger position and we have a likely candidate in uh, Gwen Van Tuan. He's actually coded uh, primarily as a forward but I've moved him over because he does show up uh, mostly on the right side here. And uh, we have a um, possible but unlikely candidate in Lam T. Fong, but I'm not going to put him on the list because uh, he joined uh, for a couple of matches in June. I think he was on the bench twice and then uh, uh, hasn't appeared uh, in the last few matches. So again, we'll bring him back if he uh, does um, make the squad. So really, we just have one right winger to look at here. It's Gwyn Van Tuan, and uh, he's a veteran with the team since 2016 with 56 caps and seven goals. And uh, he did actually do a stint with Seoul Eland, uh, a South Korean club, um, but otherwise has been in Vietnam. And uh, he was uh, part of the Asian Cup 2019 squad, but just as a substitute, he subbed into uh, three games there. And uh, over the past two years, he started uh, just four of their 22 games. Uh, but he was subbed in for nine and on the bench for six. So uh, suspended for one match and not selected for two. He's really only missed uh, three of the 22 games. So we have to put him as a likely candidate. However, uh, he is mostly a substitute, just four starts there. Uh, and, and most of those, I think all of them were as a right winger. So hasn't made his way into the starting lineup, but likely to be selected. Uh, and that's it uh, for right wingers. Again, we're going to meet the players who uh, 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 kind of uh, occupy this position. We met one of them actually with Fan Van Duck. Uh, let's meet another now because uh, uh, he is the first of our two secondary strikers, Fan Tuan Hai. Oh, uh, no, let me uh, back up a little bit uh, shortly here because we are moving on to the forward line here. We usually start that with attacking midfielders. Uh, however, we don't have any players, unbelievably, coded as attacking midfielders. Um, 
and so as 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 I've said, these three players uh, uh, left midfielder Fan Van Dutt, secondary striker Fan Ton Hai, and uh, that uh, left forward. Uh, oh, sorry, the forward uh, Gwen Tian La, uh, Lin. Those are the three players uh, covering the attacking midfielder position if the formation has one. Uh, so let's move on uh, and talk about our definite candidate, Pam Tuan Hai. Uh, not as attacking midfielder, he's coded as a secondary striker. We also have another one uh, at the portable level, uh, Gwyn Van Kuyet, uh, who we'll talk about uh, also. So uh, Pham Tuan Hai, uh, he is actually coded as a left midfielder on a couple of the sources. He's a real staple in the team, uh, but he really does play all over the place. He plays left, right, and center, uh, and he'll even uh, pop up as a center forward or a left forward or a right forward. So really in the upper quadrant of the field uh, there. And uh, he's been with Vietnam since 2021. But he already has 23 caps uh, there. And uh, over the past two years, uh, Pham Thuan Hai started 16 of their 22 games and subbed in for five and was on the bench for one other. So he was called up for all 22 matches. And that's why we have Pham Thuan Hai as a definite candidate. Uh, the other one is Gwyn Van uh, Kuyat. And, um, uh, in his case, he's been with the team since 2011. He's 30, 30, uh, two years old, and he has 57 caps and 16 goals, but uh, uh, most of those were in the past. Uh, he was actually off the team for a while, didn't make the Asian Cup in 2019, and he returned after a more than three and a half year absence in September of 2022 and started three of their remaining 17 games. He was subbed in for four and on the bench for five, uh, and then not selected for five matches, including the last three. So he's kind of right on the cusp there. Has he been dropped from the team or uh, can he make a comeback? These are just the October games, so it is possible that he'll come back. Uh, but as we saw, he had been left off the team for a long time before. So uh, really uh, hard, to, hard for us to say uh, if he'll be recalled uh, to the team or not. Gwyn Van Kuyat, a possible candidate. Okay, and I don't need to summarize this position because it's, it's part of a kind of an overall summary uh, of the forward line, which I will talk about right away after we introduce the forwards here. So the other uh, player in that partnership of three who cover the front is Gwyn uh, Chen Lin. And uh, however, we only have him as a likely candidate. I'll tell you why soon. Uh, and then uh, another of my favorite players, Gwyn Kong Fuang, but he's kind of uh, uh, only at the possible level here, and I'll tell you why soon. And another possible candidate in uh, Gwyn Van Tong. And then we have uh, one player at the uh, uh, possible but unlikely level, that is Din Than Bin, uh, but he was just subbed twice in June and not selected after that. So we're not going to put him uh, on the list. We'll just mention his name. Uh, Din Than Bin, and leave it at that. Let's go back to the uh, more likely candidates. Gwyn Tian Lin uh, has been with the team since 2018, uh, but has an impressive 50 caps and 18 goals uh, in that time for the 26-year-old. Uh, so he has uh, uh, he was selected for the Asian Cup, but was actually just a sub at that time. Um, um, and uh, for World Cup 2022 qualifying, he scored uh, eight of their 21 goals. So he's become more important uh, as time goes on. However, he did only start 12 of the, the 2022 games. Uh, sorry, uh, 12 of their 22 games over the past two years. And he was subbed in for two and on the bench for one. And not selected for six matches, and that includes the last match. So uh, he's not kind of as guaranteed as his two cohorts there, uh, who are definite candidates. Uh, 
so yeah, I was a bit surprised to see him not selected, but not being selected for one match uh, doesn't uh, matter that much. Again, though, I'll say uh, that like his two cohorts, uh, 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 Fan Van Duck and, and uh, um, sorry, I'm losing my uh, thread here, Fan Tuan Hai, uh, unlike two of those guys, he's not as uh, guaranteed as they are. Let's move on to uh, Gwyn Kong Fuang. So I'm a little sad to see him just as a possible candidate here. Uh, he was actually a fixture before 2022. Uh, but then over the past two years, he's only started three of their 22 games and subbed in for five. And that's 14 matches of the 22 that he wasn't selected for, including the last three matches. So uh, his production has dropped off. Uh, he was in the 2019 Asian Cup, which is where I came to like him. He was a starter in all five games, and he scored two of their five goals uh, there and really played uh, uh, well throughout the tournament. Lots of uh, excellent dribbles, especially against Japan uh, in that tournament. So I was excited to uh, see him again and kind of hope he makes it back. He's the uh, one of the only players playing outside of Vietnam. Uh, he does play for Yokohama. Uh, in Japan and uh, he's been with the team since 2015 with 56 caps and 12 goals so I'm really hoping he'll come back into the uh, mix here Gwen Kong Fuang uh, but only a possible candidate here uh, the other possible candidate is uh, new since June that's Gwen Van Tung and uh, he got his first cap in June 2023 and started two of the remaining six games and was on the bench for two uh, and with the under-23 team for one and not selected for one. So uh, Gwyn Van Tung, a possible candidate. And uh, that um, brings us to the end, actually, of the candidates. So uh, we'll go over them again in part two, but... Uh, uh, we're just uh, introducing them and their likelihood of making the squad uh, here. So uh, let's go to our closing thoughts. So uh, kind of repeating what I said at the beginning, but something that hopefully will have a bit more context for you now, having gone through the players. Uh, really, this, uh, this debate uh, as to whether the regulars who have been left off the team for the last four to six games, whether they'll be selected for the Asian Cup or whether the new players who have come in to replace them uh, will be selected. On the one hand, I'd be surprised to see uh, some of these regular players being dumped. Uh, on the other hand, it is a new manager bringing them in, so uh, it's quite possible that he uh, you know, will favour those new players that he's brought in over players that he hasn't really worked with yet. So I'm looking forward to the November games uh, to see, especially if any of these uh, uh, regulars, uh, regularly selected players come back. Okay, let's look forward to uh, part two or preview part two. And at that time, we'll talk about any notable non-selections. So that would be uh, definite or likely candidates here who don't make the squad. We'll talk about any surprise inclusions. Uh, that would be... Uh, um, possible but unlikely players or players that we thought were off the squad and perhaps didn't mention here who are brought back in uh, unexpectedly. And then uh, we'll talk about any new players because there are uh, always a couple of new players. Perhaps a couple of them will actually show up in the November games. Uh, usually uh, we do get a couple of candidates like that. Uh, the other thing we'll do in part two is uh, give a, an update on injuries. So uh, we had a couple, especially left back Duan Van Hao, and uh, and that one seems uh, like it could keep him out of the cup. And uh, also Gwyn Quang Hai, uh, although that injury doesn't seem that serious at the moment, uh, he's a big player. Well, both of them are really, but I'd really be upset if uh, Gwyn Quang Hai was injured. Uh, for the cup. So we'll see in part two uh, what their status is and I hope you join us for that.
We originally planned to tag on our past, present and future plans for the media cast, but we have instead decided to put a link to that 10 minute video in the show notes. It covers what we're working on and what we plan to do over the next nine months. I'd like to thank Nabur Abachan and Pixabay for the wonderful music you hear in this media cast. The title is called Arabic Trap. <laughs>